Hello, this is Radio Rose coming to you from Miss Tilden's third grade c- class at Highcroft Ridge Elementary. I'm Catherine. And I'm Courtney. And, and we're, we're your hosts host today. today. Several third graders from Miss Tilden's class have been learning about Martin Luther King. And we have put together a broadcast to share what we've learned with our Radio Highcroft listener. First, let's hear a play by Jacob M., Austin, Izzy, Andrew, John B., and Mackenzie. The play is a little about Martin's life. Let's listen. A Great American Martin Luther King Jr. was a civil rights leader until his assassination in 1968. He helped black Americans learn to use their rights to vote. He knew from experience about the hardships of being a black American. One such experience happened when he was 16 years old. Scene 1, a bus. Martin's speech class is returning from a speech contest in Valdosta, Georgia. Wow, it's empty. We can sit anywhere we want. Not anywhere. You know the law. Blacks have to sit in the back of the bus. Freddy sits down in a seat in the middle of the bus. But the bus is empty. What difference does it make? Miss Bradley, Martin, and the other students board the bus. They sit near Freddy and Joe. We won the speech contest. Listen to you. We didn't win anything. Martin won. No, Joe. Freddy's right. Martin won for all of us. That was a fine speech, Martin. Thanks, Miss Bradley. This is the happiest day of my life. As the bus travels back to Atlanta, it fills up with other passengers. Most of the other passengers are white. This is incredible. I've never been so insulted in my life. They're just sitting there like like white people. What's the trouble back there? You can see for yourself. Look where they're sitting. All right, the fun's over. All of you have to move to the back of the bus. Miss Bradley stands up quickly. Do what the man says, class. But we have as much right to sit here as anyone else. Is that so? Then why don't we ask the police about that? Martin, quick, tell the other students to move. But why are we putting up with this, Miss Bradley? It's time we said no. Come on, boy, move or I'll call the police. No! Mom, please, I could lose my job. Now please do what I tell you. How could you lose your job, Miss Bradley? We have a right to sit anywhere on the bus just like anyone else. It's the law, Martin. Like it or not. Yeah, kids, so move it or go to jail. Come on, ML. It isn't worth it. You're wrong, Freddy. It is worth it. With a sigh, Martin gets up fighting back tears. All right. Everyone, you heard Miss Bradley. Let's go move to the back. The students move to the back of the bus. Miss Bradley and her class have to stand for 90 miles. Scene 2, the King Home. Martin is doing his homework in the kitchen. His father, Reverend King, enters. Son, I hear your teacher, Miss Bradley, hasn't been in school all week. Yeah, who cares? Are you still angry with her over what happened on the bus? She was too scared to stand up for her rights. You never would have moved. Reverend King thinks for a moment. Never is a strong word, son. Would you have? I would have if I was responsible for someone else's children. Besides, I don't think you've given Miss Bradley a fair chance. That is what I came to tell you. What do you mean? The reason she wasn't in school this week is because she was in jail. She was arrested for protesting the many laws against blacks. Scene 3, Miss Bradley's Classroom. Sometime later, Martin pays Miss Bradley a visit during recess. Miss Bradley, my father told me the reason you were out of school last week. He said you were arrested for protesting laws against blacks. That's right. They are horrible laws, Martin. We have to fight them every chance we get. But I don't understand. Why did you make us move to the back of the bus? Because I was there as your teacher. My first job was to protect my students. Martin is silent for a moment. I get it. Being a teacher means having to think 
for a lot of people at once. Exactly. Martin learned his lesson well. Almost 15 years later, he led thousands of people in a successful protest against segregation on buses. During civil rights protests, he worked hard to prevent violence during civil rights protests. As a result, he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964. Every January, we honor his memory with a national holiday. Martin had some important big words. Why don't we hear what those are? This is Corey, and one of Martin's big words was together. The word together was important to Martin Luther King Jr. because he really cared about every American, black or white. He wanted every American to live together in peace and quiet. My name is Jack, and one of Martin's big words was courage. I think courage is an important word to Martin because of the many people that were brave to fight for their rights, even though they were being tortured. My name is True. My big word is I have a dream, the word that changed the world. We all have dreams, some pleasant, some not, but Martin's dream was pleasant. His dream was that black little girls and black little boys would be together, not apart. His dream came true. If he was alive, he would never be sad again, ever. He would be the happiest person to live on the planet. Ellie has some interesting trivia for you today. I'm Ellie. These are some fast facts about Martin Luther King's life. When he was arrested, he could not call his wife. When he was five, he and his dad changed his name from Michael to Martin. They let kids march in protest. He skipped two grades. His sister, Willie Christine, was called Chris. The boycott went on from December 5, 1955 to December 21, 1956. The rules back then were called Jim Crow laws. They were very disrespectful. He studied and learned how Indians won without ever firing a gun. That's all for now. That was great. Now Abby wants to tell us about some important dates in his life. What are those dates, Abby? January 15, 1929, Martin Luther King Jr. was born. If Martin hadn't been born, then segregation would still be happening. June 18, 1953, Martin married. If he didn't get married, he would have no other family. November 17, 1955, Martin's daughter was born. If Martin never had children, they might not have gotten some of the ideas they got to stop segregation. April 4, 1968, Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated. It was a hard time for all of us. We still miss him, but at least we can remember him by the good deeds he did. Thanks, Abby. Now Maggie's going to tell us about a famous quotation. Hi, I'm Maggie, and I'm going to tell you about one of Martin Luther King Jr.'s quotations. This is what he said. Wait. For years I have heard the word wait. We have waited for more than 340 years for our rights. What Martin is trying to say is he wants his rights right then and there. But every time he says so, someone says wait. Wait can sometimes be good, but in times of segregation, wait was a very disliked word. Finally, we'd like to finish with a poem called I Have a Dream that Jacob Y., Megan, Ben, Devin, Ami, Savion, and Jonathan are going to do for us. Let's listen. There was a man in America who had a dream, they say, that all the people of the earth could live in peace someday. And when they spoke to gather crowds, his heart and soul would sing, This gracious man, this gentleman, this Martin Luther King, I have a dream. This great man used to say, I have a dream. His words would light the way. The time he lived was a trouble time when people could not see. In spite of all our differences, we have the right to be. And so he tried to tell us all his word of peace would ring. This honest man, this noble man, this Martin Luther King, I have a dream. This great man used to say, I have a dream. His words will light the way. I have a dream to really harmony. I have a dream that all of us are free. Are free, 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 free. We hope you enjoyed what we've worked on for you. 
hope you learned a lot about Martin Luther King. That's, That's all for now. now.